All right, I'm going to show you today how to make a flat felled seam. Um, this is something that you'll find actually on the hem of your jeans, uh, on the in inner seam usually. Um, it's a very strong seam, it stands up a lot of wear and tear. So if you're joining two fabrics, uh, like for a wrap, um, if you have two short pieces and you want to make a long wrap, this is a safe thing to do. Um, you want to keep an eye on it, obviously, uh, because you're trusting your baby to it. Um, it's not something you want to take short fence with, obviously, but um, this is something that can be used safely. It's used in many pouches, which, you know, people don't tend to have a problem with sewing-wise. Uh, and it's really not any different from a wrap. So the first thing you're going to do is try to make sure that you have a nice straight edge going across. Um, the video that I just uploaded uh, will show how to do that if you're using wrap fabric. And you know, it's just it's a technique that use that works for most um, woven fabrics. Um, this is linen. I did the same thing with this: snip, take out a weft thread, um, pull it, and then cut along that line. So what we're going to do is measure so that one, we're not going to overlap completely like this. One of them is going to be a little bit shy of the other. I've got about a half inch there, I think. You can't tell so well on this grid, but yeah, there we go. Um, I tend to just kind of eyeball this stuff. So we're going to go to the machine. Hopefully my camera doesn't fall off. Um, I'm going to select a stitch on my machine that does the back tack for me automatically. If you don't have a machine that does that, remember to reverse when you start. Um, and this is something that you can pin if you'd like to. I sew so often that I almost never pin things anymore. Um, I'm trying not to snuffle too much. The ragweed is crazy here. Uh, so I'm just going to start sewing. And you can see I'm sewing another about a half inch um, from the cut edge of my blue fabric here. Now if you are um, if your fabric has a right side and a wrong side, um, you would want it, you know, it doesn't really matter with this seam. It's going to show either way anyway. Um, if you want the clean part of the join to show, you would have these right sides together. But since most of the fabrics we'll be working with don't have a wrong side, it doesn't tend to be an issue. You can take your time on this. There's no need to rush. And I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of trying to make sure that my weft lines stay relatively lined up there. Uh, weft are the threads that go across the fabric. Warp is the thread that goes along it. And I, you know, this is, I'm kind of holding it backwards or 90 degrees for that, but I'll show you in a moment. So up here, I've got the selvage edge. That's the edge of the fabric where um, basically where it's it's a woven edge and you can actually leave this if you want to on a wrap or something like that um, but this is the side if you're weaving it's going to be going back and forth like this these are the weft warp threads these are the weft threads not terribly important unless you're into weaving um, so at this point if you're good you'll go to your ironing board <laughs> and iron this open I am not so good, it's hot, and I don't feel like ironing, so I'm just going to finger press. That works really well with linen anyway. Linen presses like a dream, although it also wrinkles like a nightmare. So you can see I've got a pretty decent press there, just for the few seconds of finger pressing. Now, what makes this a felled flat seam is that I'm going to take this half inch and fold it over a little lip of fabric there. And then what we're gonna do is sew along that fold. Now this is another place where the iron comes in handy. If you iron this down first, you don't need to worry about doing any of this while you're sewing. But like I said, I'm lazy and it's hot and I'm not gonna iron. So I'm just gonna finger press this all the way down. And because it's linen, it'll stay pretty well. If you're using something that doesn't press easily, um, you can also pin this. Just make it a little bit neater. Obviously, I'm not going to be using this for a carrier, so I'm not too concerned about how neat it looks. And then we're just going to stitch along this fold. Again with the back tack. And you can see I stop every once in a while, just kind of make sure that that's 
fold it under nicely. And then hold it down so it's not going anywhere. If you want a pin, you don't have to do this part. <laughs> I tend to hold rather than pinning because it's faster. If you're brand new at sewing, pinning is probably a good idea. You can also do this along a curved seam, um, like a pouch. It is a lot harder to get a nice looking, it's not going to be flat like this, it's going to have little um, sort of wrinkles in it because it's along a curve and there's no way to get around that, but that's also usually not seen when you're wearing it, so it's not a huge deal. Alright, and you can see I did miss a little spot here, so um, you know, if you wanted to, you could kind of unpick here to here and then re-sew that. Um, you can see what I was getting at here, so I'm not going to actually bother doing that. And then on the other side, it's got a slightly cleaner look. So, you know, you would you can decide which one you want to show. This one shows two lines of stitching, this one shows only one. Um, this is a very, very strong seam because of the um, overlap there. Um, that's not going to come out especially if you've got a closer weave than this linen is. Um, the other way to join two fabrics together is called a French seam. And that's a nice one to do sort of in conjunction with the felt seam. You can do like a flat French, I don't know if there's a name for it. Um, it's something that'll give it a little extra strength. This one, if your fabric has wrong sides, you want to start with them together. So there's obviously no right wrong side on this linen. It's just dyed all the way through. Uh, but we could pretend that this is the right side and this is the right side and then I've got wrong sides together. So on this one, you're actually just going to sew about a quarter of an inch from the edge once you've got them lined up. And again, this is where a nice straight cut comes in handy because then you can just kind of finagle your edges so that they're... Let me get a little further away here. Kind of finagle your edges so that they're matched up. And I like to use the edge of my presser foot to, it's not quite a quarter inch, it's actually a little bit more on this foot. They do so sell quarter inch feet for quilting, and you can use that if you want to be really precise, but all's fair in love and sewing. I'm just going to use the side of my presser foot. And this is something that you'll trim in the next step anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. And with either of these seams, uh, you'd want to stitch length. Um, my machine goes from um, zero to five, and somewhere between a three and a half and a four is going to be a good stitch length for this. Um, you don't want it too close, just because, I don't know, it takes forever to sew when it's too close, and you don't want it too wide because it'll come out easily. A lot of machines come preset at about 2.2, and personally I think that's too close for most applications. So. I've got that seam going all the way along, and I'm going to be a little more sloppy on this one. I'm not going to actually go in and trim this. Um, you do want to make sure that you don't have a lot of raggedy stuff coming out because that can show in the next step. So here's another I'm too lazy to iron. I'm just going to finger press this open because it's linen and I'm lazy. These are just scraps of fabric, hence the incredible wrinkliness here. So this is a finish that a lot of designers will use on the inside of their clothes uh, because it makes the raw edge, it encloses the raw edge, and it looks very nice. So now we would actually be, let me think, now we would be right sides together. And here Okay, so I've got, I'm going to make sure that this is pressed so that your stitch line is right at the edge. And here is where the iron is nice. But again, hot, lazy. And I'm just going to do this before I sew so that I don't have to stop and do it while I'm sewing. The thing about sewing is if you want it to look nice, you got to make friends with your iron. Get a nice iron if you can. It 
cheap iron just makes everything harder. And you know, I was honestly shocked that a more, you know, a non-cheap iron made a, a difference, but it does. So here I'm going to go a little bit more than that presser foot width, um, just so that I'm enclosing the whole of this raw edge inside. Uh, if you don't do that, and I will not do that towards the end on purpose so you can see what it looks like. Um, then you'll just have the raw edge kind of sticking out. So I'm sewing a little slower than I us usually do just to keep it a consistent distance from that existing fold. Never have to go faster than you sew. All right, so here I'm going to deliberately go over a little bit so you can see what happens if you don't leave enough there. All right, so if you don't close the whole thing, you can see my raw edge sticking out there. And where it is fully enclosed, then you've got this very nice, can't even tell that there's a raw edge anywhere there. And you can leave it like this if you're sewing clothes. I think for a baby carrier, it's nice to have it stitched down so it's not kind of flapping away at you here. Um, like this, it's a French seam. Like this, it's going to be, I don't know if there's a name for it. I guess a stitched down French seam. And it's similar to the felt seam. You're just gonna sew close to this fold all the way down. This is very secure because you've now got three seams basically holding these together. Uh, it makes a nice clean finish. You don't have to worry about folding that raw edge under. It's the most time consuming, but it looks nice too. And we'll just stop there because that's where I didn't sew the raw edge in. And that looks similar to the felled seam on this side. And, you know, pretty similar on this side too, except if you look closely, you can see where that other color was in there. So those are two ways to join pieces of fabric that are appropriate for baby ring. Thanks very much.